So we just heard that uh, realization is possible and there is a way to uh, realize, realize the self. Now, how is this possible? Janaka Maharaja first tells about the scriptures where the scriptures talk about a process called Neti Neti. So the method to realize is to eliminate that which is not self. Bring a clear understanding of what is self and what is non-self. So when I say self, I mean Brahman, pure consciousness. Okay, so how do we understand what is self and what is not self? And what is this process of Neti Neti, not this, not this. Adi Shankaracharya also emphasized the process of Neti Neti. To Neti is to say not this, this is not Atma, this is not Atma. And then finally arrive at Atma. So how does this work? What is this? It's a pencil. When you say this is a pencil, pencil is an object. Okay. The moment you say this is pencil, you have negated what this is not. This is not bottle, this is not uh, laptop, this is not paper, this is not phone, this is not book, but this is pencil. This, you're saying this, to tell this is something, this object is something, you have to negate it that this is not uh, the other objects. But you don't explicitly say that, but you imply that when you say this is pencil. Okay, that's a hold good for any other object. When you say this is paper, you are very clear that this is paper and this is not something else. Correct? Whenever you point at an object, you are deliberating and enforcing a notion on it and implying that it is not another object. So, neti neti. So, when you say I, you have to say, you have to remove out, you have to negate what I am not. So when you say pencil, you're enforcing this is a pencil, this is not paper. And if somebody says this is a paper, you say, no, 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 this is not paper, this is a pencil. You are very clear. But that clarity about that this is it, that this is an object, you don't have when it comes to subject. When you say I, instead of saying this is I, you always go on confusing I with body, I with mind, I with thought, I with identity. Somewhere you have not made a firm uh, conclusion what I is. Right? That's why you keep falling into traps. So Neti Neti is a process where you come, you want to arrive at the clarity of what is I. So you start by negating. You say, I am not the body. I am not the mind. Okay. Why I am not the body? Why I am not the mind? We, we have elaborated on that. How the body changes, the mind changes, the mind and the body are objects. Now, how I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not the intellect, I am not the uh, identity. Why is that? Why I am not that? In any perception, there is a subject and an object. Okay, there's a subject who is the knower and there's an object which is the known. Okay, so when you say pencil, this is my pencil, you know that this is an object and I am the subject. I think it's the charger. I'll just get it and plug it in. Is everybody following? So in Neti Neti, what you're trying to understand is 
I am not object. I am subject. And whatever is object, I negate. First, what are you trying to do? You are trying to negate objects. Whatever is not object, simply, I am not object. Because I cannot be object. I am subject. Okay. What the subject is, we come to. First, negate all objects. That negating of the object is not happening. Right now, you are associating with the object and telling I am object. Example, body. Is body object or subject? Body is an object. Okay, is there any doubt in that? No. Because in the body, I can see. Okay. Then there's a body, somebody's body who has body all intact. Then somebody has a body, but the other person doesn't have leg. Then the person, somebody has a body, doesn't have hand, somebody doesn't have eye, somebody doesn't have ear. But still, none of that is affecting the self, the subject. Okay? The deformity of the body doesn't deform the self. So the body is an object. So body is like a car. And I am the driver of the car. Okay? So body is an object. Okay? So I am not the body. Nate, body is not me. Mind, is mind subject or object? Object. Mind is object because I can see my thoughts. Thoughts are objects. They come and they go. Just a moment. Awesome. Okay. The so body is not me. Body is object. Mind is not me. Mind is object. Intellect is not me. Is intellect not me clear? Intellect is also object. Ideas, thoughts, decisions, knowledge, all that are objects. Then identities. I am man. I am woman. I am man. Is it an object or subject? How is it an object? Even that identity you can see. Ah, it's attributed to the body. It's, a, it's an objective. Okay. Subject is pure. Subject is neither. It's genderless. I am husband. Is an object. I am employee is an object. So all objects, ruthlessly, all objects, I am father, I am son, I am whatever identity, I am guru, I am shishya. All objects, including identities, body, mind, intellect, everything has to be negated. Now, when everything is negated, what is the subject? When everything is negated, what remains is a pure, deep silence. Any answer that is given is again an object. Okay, So you negate that answer. You say, no, this is not me. Then comes a point of time, there is no answer. What remains is a pure subjectivity. Pure knowing. And that pure knowing is the I. Okay. Now this I don't think it is buried under all these objects. No. It is never buried. It's actually always in the foreground. It's never in the background. The only confusion that's happening is the mind is putting a lot of other objects in the foreground and making you, confusing you that real I with the all these objects. So all you need to do is eliminate the objects from, when I say objects, anatma, 
what remains will be the pure I. And you will see that has always been the foreground. That has always been your experiential knowledge of the real I. Everything else has been a superimposition of that. Okay. And the I has to be known as the unchanging, formless, pure consciousness. If it is not known as that, again, it, there's a chance we'll know it as something else. So Vedanta gives an example of snake and the rope. Let's say you, the, there's a rope, you see it as a snake. Then you realize, oh, it's not a rope. Sorry, it's not a snake. But not a snake is not enough knowledge. It is not a snake, it is a rope. It's complete knowledge. <laughs> Otherwise, if you say it's not a rope, then you'll tell it's a stick. Again, this is another level of superimposition. What I am not okay, is anatma, removed. What I am is atma Both have to happen. It is not a snake, okay, but it doesn't stop there. Okay, it's all, you just go on removing. So it's not this, not this, not this. What it is, again, if it's left to nothing there, if it's left blank, the blank gets filled with another superimposition. Okay, that gets filled with, oh, Atma is light. Atma is something else. So what Atma is? Stuck, Chit, Ananda. Existence, that you, the knowledge that you have, that all the time, that I exist, which needs no other light. Then, consciousness. It is of the nature of knowing. It is the only one that is of the nature of knowing. You understand? Art self is the only one that has the ability to know. Nothing else has the ability to know. So what is consciousness? The, ability, the knowing principle is consciousness. Existence is consciousness. And bliss is consciousness. If you don't know it in its entirety, Satchit Ananda, that don't not knowing in entirety will always get filled with some other superimposition. Okay, so it's not a it's not a snake, fine. But snake I'm superimposing on a stick. Snake I'm superimposing on a wheel. Snake I'm superimposing on a uh, glass. You have to know the snake is a superimposition and it's being superimposed on a rope. So Atma, that's why it's called Atma. Anatma Viveka. Viveka about both Atma, what Atma is, and what Anatma is. Not just what is Anatma. You have to become clear of what is object and what is subject. Okay? So, how do you do that? By eliminating first what I am not. Whatever is an object is not me. Simple. And what am I? So, whatever, when you have eliminated whatever is an object, you have gone to the deepest core. And the deepest core is called Pratyakatma, the foremost. Okay? The Pratyakatma, I am. So when the Upanishads say, I am Atma Brahma, I am Atma Brahma, Mandukya Upanishad says, I am Atma Brahma. My self is Brahma. So that self is the one that is after all elimination. Of elimination of removed. All objects are removed. All objectivity is removed. Pure subjectivity, Satchit Ananda remains. And the pure subjectivity, Satchit Ananda, is Brahman. Okay. In the next uh, discussion, Janaka Maharaja goes deeper into how objects are perceived and uh, what is the distinction between perceived objects and self. Okay, we'll take a take that up in the next section.